In this video, I will be covering a type of file called a Chord Profile, which has a .cho or .pro file extension. Unlike PDFs or images, a Chord Profile contains only text, consisting mostly of lyrics and chords. It provides many advantages over a simple text file, though, as the Chord Pro syntax ensures that chords line up properly with lyrics and also supports special commands known as directives. Directives are very powerful and serve many purposes, including populating metadata, such as the title of the song, the artist, or the genre, styling, such as highlighting certain segments, adding comments, or changing the font size, defining the chorus and repeating it in a simple and concise way, defining sections for content such as guitar tablature. Due to the very large list of supported directives, I will be focusing only on those that are most commonly used. To begin, I will demonstrate loading a chord profile containing a simple directive and a few lines of lyrics. The file contents can be seen on the left in a text editor while the right side shows how that file will appear when loaded in mobile sheets. The first line of the file contains a directive listing the title of the song. Directives always start with a curly brace, followed by the keyword for the directive, which in this case is title. If the directive supports listing a value, a colon is placed after the keyword, followed by the value, which in this case is Swing Low Sweet Chariot. The directive then ends with a closing curly brace. Some directives, such as New Page, do not list a value. It is important to note that directives must be placed on a line by themselves. The only exception to this is the Highlight Directive, which can be used to highlight portions of a line, which I will demonstrate later. After the directive, we can see the first line of lyrics and chords. Chords are inserted into the lyrics using brackets, and we can see on the rendered page that the chords are placed directly above the letter they precede. It is important that the first letter in the chord is an uppercase chord letter in order for it to be recognized as a valid chord. Mobile Sheets is very flexible with chord definitions, though and supports invalid chords if users want to be able to position certain characters above the lyrics. If the G chord was changed to the letter T, for example, we can see that the T is still placed above the lyrics and will be styled like other chords, but it will not be transposable. It is also possible to specify slash chords, such as C slash G, and both notes will be properly transposed. Now we are ready to look at an example with more directives. One important thing to note is that most directives contain a shorter form such as T for title or SOC for start of chorus. This makes them easier and faster to type, especially when using a virtual keyboard. The first line in this file uses the shorter form of title on the first line. It then defines a chorus section by placing the SOC directive at the start of the chorus and the EOC directive at the end of the chorus. In Mobile Sheets, we can see that the word Chorus is inserted before the Chorus section in bold text, and the Chorus section is indented to make it easier to identify. Later in the file, the Chorus directive is used to repeat the entire Chorus section without having to duplicate it. We can also see that the CI directive which is a short form of the highlight directive, is used in the middle of a line of lyrics to only highlight a couple of words. 
At the top of the file, we can see the meta directive, which can be used to populate metadata fields in mobile sheets. While some directives like artist, album, composer, year, duration, and tempo are standard Chord Pro keywords that are supported, it's often desirable to populate other mobile sheets fields that aren't included in the standard directives. To do this, Type meta, followed by a colon, then enter the name of the field to populate and the value for that field. The field and value need to be separated by a space. In this file, we can see that the artist field was populated using the artist directive, but the collection field was populated using the meta field. It should be noted that the meta fields are only processed when the file is first imported. If the file is edited in mobile sheets, these fields will not be processed again. This is to avoid unexpected changes to the song metadata, as users may have already modified the song fields in the song editor. Below the metadata fields, we can see the capo directive. The capo directive requires the fret that the capo should be placed on. This field will populate the capo value in the text display settings in mobile sheets. Which can be viewed if the capo display is enabled. But this will not transpose any chords by default. For more information on this and the capo setting, watch the video titled Text and Chord Profile Settings. The last subject that should be covered is somewhat complex. While MobileSheet supports various options for changing the style and coloring of lyrics and chords, some users may want more control over how their file is displayed. In order to support this, the Pango markup syntax was added to the Chord Pro specification to give users more control over the styling. While not everything the Pango markup syntax supports will be covered, I will go through a few examples to show how it can be used. It's important to note that any Pango markup syntax overrides any of the default text display settings. I will start by demonstrating the easiest syntax first. To make one or more characters bold, place a B at the start of the characters and a B at the end of the characters. The left side image shows what it looks like in the text editor, while the right side image shows what it looks like while viewing the song normally in mobile sheets. Similarly, to make one or more characters italic, place a I at the start of the characters and place a I at the end of the characters. Both B and I are actually shortened forms of a more complex syntax. For most of the settings in the Pango markup syntax, you must place a span before the characters and a span after the characters. For users who have worked on HTML for websites, this will feel familiar. To change the style of the span, you must add attributes to control the properties you want to change. We can see that the B shortened form is the same as using a span with weight equal to bold. To change the word apple to red, we can specify the color red in a span as seen here. To increase the font size, we can set the size attribute to larger, which increases the font size by 25%. To specify an exact size, we can set the size attribute to a number. In this example, we have set the size to 22. It's important to note that we can enter multiple attributes to a single entry. In a similar manner, we can actually have multiple layered spans. For example, to make a phrase green, 
but only make one word larger, we can use a nested span as shown here. See the comments in the video description below for a list of the most commonly used Pango commands, as well as a link to the Chord Pro website, which discusses the commands further. The full list of supported Chord Pro directives can be found in the Mobile Sheets manual under the section named Chord Pro Files. The manual can be accessed in Mobile Sheets by tapping the overflow icon on the library screen, followed by Manual, and Full Manual. and can also be found on the main Zubersoft website at www.zubersoft.com. As demonstrated in this video, Chord Pro files provide many benefits over simple text files, both with the reliability of their output and the large number of ways they can be styled and configured. Thank you for watching. To find more tutorial videos, click the links below or visit www.zubersoft.com. There are videos covering both basic features in mobile sheets, as well as more advanced topics like MIDI.